Hey guys, it's Cam. I just want to point out that I have Zozo out working at the moment. So if you're catching the replay, you're going to be able to um, kind of track along here how she does. Um, I'm going to chat with you while I cook because that's what I'm doing right now. And because I realized this is the sort of thing that you need to see. Um, if I get the stand to hold properly. Just how practically you can work uh, effective training strategies into your everyday life. I've got a zucchini boat situation happening here. I've been chopping a bunch of mushrooms. I'm just gonna keep on working through this because my day is jam packed. Not only do I have all the training sessions to do with the dogs, I've had a lot of phone calls, a lot of consults. I've got pickups, I've got drop offs, a lot of stuff going on. Hey Anthony, I'll see you soon. Um, so kind of double timing here, but this is also what I really want to point out is necessary for you in order to create change, especially lasting change, is this reprogramming and repatterning that needs to be done consistently for a sustained period of time. So today, uh, my prompt for you is around this topic of realistic expectations for how long you need to do the things you need to do in order to fix the problem that you have with your dog. Um, this is an area that I see a lot of people struggle with, especially our clients. And we tell them even proactively before we start training their dog, we will say to them, the hardest thing is probably going to be that we'll do this heavy lifting. You will see dramatic change. You will be inspired and impressed with your dog. Sometimes it's like magic, right? The, the words literally come out of their mouth. It's like magic. I don't know who this dog is. What have you done with my dog? And sometimes when that's the case in particular, it makes it really difficult for an owner to maintain objectivity that this is because we did consistent, sustained, specific, strategic work to affect programming, patterning, you know, in the dog. So if you're joining me late, I'm cooking and I've got Zozo working on place. Okay, a little bull terrier in the background. Um, they'll they'll not necessarily remember or connect to the fact that. You know, you sent the dog away to a professional and every day we spelled everything out for them and we explained to them, this is how the world works. This is what's expected of you. This is how you need to operate in these situations, right? And that means like, if she breaks place right now, I have to stop what I'm doing and interrupt my process here around cooking or whatever it is and go deal with it, correct? And return her to place, right? Um, instead, what, <laughs> good girl. Instead, what happens is you get a vision now your dog is trained or you've done the, the, the heavy lifting yourself. You've implemented from online tutorials or a friend showed you, um, hey Joe, hey Gotti, a friend showed you, you know, some strategy, some prong color stuff, something that would be valuable. And so, you know, you started to make some changes and do some things at home and now your dog is looking better and you get a little bit of a false sense of confidence that you wanna go you know, push the envelope, take them into somewhere that's maybe too big of a, of a challenge or distraction that they're not ready for yet, um, or take a risky, you know, uh, take a risk on socializing your dog with another dog, for example, where maybe they have a history of having issues. And so I really just kind of wanna point out that whichever side of the spectrum you're on, whether you've done the work yourself and you're seeing this transformation, you're seeing improvements and gains and change, Checking on my little girl here. No, no, good. Um, or we've done it for you, and now the dogs come home and you relax a little bit because you're like, wow, this is amazing. My dog call, you know, comes when I call them. They don't jump on people. They're not rushing through the doorway. They're not um, barking from the crate. They're not being disruptive in situations where they used to be, overtaking my space, et cetera, et cetera. And then you kind of sit up a little bit like a cyclist, right? You're close to the line. You should really be putting on heavy duty on the gas to blast through that finish line. But you, you think you're alone, nobody's around you. So you sit up a little bit and then someone overtakes you, okay? So the reality is I've had to share this formula again this week with one of our graduate clients. It's been a month out from the board and train. They have had a lot of success and a few incidences because they could admittedly say, we relaxed a little bit. We let our guard down a little bit. We started to not hold our dog accountable to the little minutia that we did in the very beginning of, you know, thresholds and how she comes out of the crate and how she physically behaves and where her head is at when we dress her in her collars and tools. 
we started to relax a little bit, maybe rush those sequences of getting her outside to go to the bathroom in the morning or dressing her to take her through the threshold to go for a walk. All these little areas matter immensely. And when you graduate your dog from board and train, we really get into talking through that and letting people know, hey, this is really important that you're picky about, right? And hey to everyone who's joined on the broadcast late, I am cooking while I am chatting with you and I'm training a dog. So this is how you do it. Um, anyway, they had admittedly sat up and relaxed a little bit and then they had fallout and consequences from that. Now, was it as severe, you know, is it as problematic as before training and tools? No, that's the beauty of doing the work and having the right strategy, the right tools, the right training approach and having that foundation reset and you know somebody doing the heavy lifting for you or you committing to doing it for yourself but nonetheless it was still you know this happened that you know happened this scared us this made us concern this is an area where we felt like we didn't have control or things weren't calm um, and that's not what we're aiming for right that was not that's not our goal we want the opposite so i liken this back to you know, my health overhaul. When I was growing up, I was super duper sick with autoimmune issues. I had a lot of problems uh, with, you know, feeling like my body was betraying me, right? I really truly questioned if I would live to 40 and haven't made it yet, but next year. Um, you know, this was as a result of rampant inflammation issues, a lot of things that were deeply connected to trauma. So I had to learn and, and, and figure this out over time, right? That it wasn't just a medical problem. Um, it, it was, you know, a bigger issue than that needed a multifaceted approach. But for a long time in that process of trying to figure it out and having so many ailments in association with this autoimmune disorder, I was on a lot of medications. I had tried a lot of holistic things, but I had also, you know, given up in certain areas and gone towards pain medication or things that were specific to the uh, particular symptoms of the disease that I was dealing with. And this ended up ultimately including the loss of my eyesight, right? So the inflammatory issues I was dealing with suddenly became a problem that was associated with the eyes. I started to have issues with my vision and it was like, oh, hell no that became the catalyst, right? The pain point was enough at that moment to say What's, what I'm doing isn't working and I need to make a change. And so then I became receptive to the right information and I became determined to go out and get the right information and start implementing the things I needed to do. And I was told at the time, which I truly resonate with now and understand and pass on forward, that you know, I needed to do things the right way for at least half as long as I was going the wrong direction or I was inconsistent in my approach previously, right? Try this, try that. Maybe this was the right thing, but I didn't do it exclusively and consistently for long enough. So I needed to go in the right direction for at least half as long as I'd been going the wrong direction in order to see that transformation of uh, patterning to change, like to truly overhaul the problem and really leave it in the past, right? So with behavior, it's very similar. You know, the family that I mentioned previously, this is a very challenging dog, a lot of difficult issues, very complicated, genetics, behavior, health, all of it. They have eight, 16, 18 months total now, you know, of life uh, on this dog. And so they need to look at change of process and approach their new dynamic 100% consistently in the right direction for at least six to nine months, okay? Half as long as we were going the wrong direction, trying this, trying that, trying this, trying that. We need to stay the course on the right direction. That's a lot longer than a three week board and train, 30 days follow up once the dog comes home, you know, maybe 90 days total of we've changed the diet and we want you to slowly roll out more freedom and see this and that. It could be a lot longer than that, guys, okay? So this, I think, was really helpful for a lot of people when they bumped up against that false sense of security that my dog is now trained or things are better or we had success in one moment, so now I'm gonna relax, sit up, and kind of assume I'm good to go. Don't do that. Stay on it. If you're seeing good results, it's because you've made changes. It's because of what you're doing now. 
when you go to relax and open up that lane of freedom to give more opportunity for your dog to have autonomy and make choices, pay attention to the fallout. What happens when you do that, right? Do you start to notice from very small adjustments that, you know, I didn't ask for the threshold uh, coming out of the crate and my dog went out in the yard and started barking, right? Um, pay attention to the cause and effect there because there's going to be a really, you know, true connection that may require you to even like keep a notebook or, you know, dialogue out loud with your partner, your spouse, your roommates, your, um, you know, friend, if you live with somebody at all, ask them to really process through that with you in a truly, you know, committed way that, that we look at, you know, how did today go? If we started to relax and, and cut some corners and take some shortcuts, what did we notice, right? Do we notice that our dog seemed like they had higher energy, they were more, you know, clingy, they were more disconnected, they didn't listen as well. Now the opposite may be true, right? You may relax the, the structure, you may relax, you know, the rules a little bit from what we show you going, you know, home from board and train, for example, um, and things may be going pretty darn well. But when you do, and I say when, because it's really not an if, it's a when. This is dogs we're dealing with, okay? Um, and it's people. So when you do have an incident where something happens, okay? Probably the most common are, we've been doing so well, I've been taking my dog everywhere, and then all of a sudden he growled at somebody. Guys, come on. It, some people are just growl worthy, okay? Um, or, you know, things been going so well, it's been so great, we're not having any issues at home, but all of a sudden the other day she reacted on leash at another dog. It was so embarrassing, right? Hey, Chrissy. Um, it could be, <laughs> oh, thanks, Chrissy, appreciate it. It's long. Um, it could be that, you know, you're missing the, the boat here on the fact that you've relaxed. Things have not been as structured. You haven't been spelling your dog's day out in the same way. And so, in fact, in those moments, they started to feel more entitled to act on, in that way or more uncomfortable. And you're seeing the fallout of some insecurity because the anxiety, the insecurity they deal with um, that was present a month ago or three months ago from the very moment they came in onto the planet is still there. It's still part of who that dog is and it's still part of how they struggle, right? Welcome into the broadcast if you're joining me late. I'm working Zozo and I'm working dinner. <laughs> All right. So, um, hey, Denise. Hey, by the way, I'm going to start some salsa lessons. I'm going to have to reach out to you and have you uh, hook a sister up on some tips. Strategery. Figured I'd add that to my new life repertoire. Why not? Um, so, hopefully, this is making sense, guys, and helpful because. I feel like a broken record some days. Um, hey, Diane, I feel like a broken record some days talking about this, that it's not reasonable. Sandra, hello. Lucy's doing amazing. She's brilliant. She's an absolutely crazy intelligent dog, which I think is your problem with her. <laughs> um, so anyway, I feel like a broken record sometimes talking to our clients like this about, you know, how it's too soon. It's just simply too soon. You know, they'll, they'll email me, they'll call me, they'll, they'll have a, a crisis moment where their dog does some obnoxious, boneheaded, scary, or, you know, shocking, intimidating, embarrassing thing. And it's like, you're still dealing with a living, breathing being. You still have a dog. You're still dealing with the core patterning habits and behavior that was built over many, many months and sometimes many years before you started to do things the right way. So you really need to remember from the very beginning, I need to go in the right direction for at least half as long as I was going the wrong direction. And by the way, that wrong direction, don't forget, is not just one mistake one time or one bad strategy one time. It's the intermittent, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm throwing pasta at the wall to see what sticks. It's the, you know, try this, try that, do treat training, clicker training, go to PetSmart, then go to the, you know, um, choke chain trainer and then go to uh, use the crate, then don't use the crate. And then the dog's in a harness in the, you know, on the walk because I want her to be able to sniff and pull and smell on the trail, but then, you know, she's reacting to somebody, so I put this other collar on her to try to have more control when I take her to the restaurant. 
that's called the wrong way, <laughs> okay? That's called the wrong way. So if you are in the wrong way club and you tried this or that and you were throwing pasta at the wall to see what sticks to get your dog to do what you want them to do and to have control, you need to be going the right way at least half as long. And that needs to be consistent. You need to follow directions and good advice and with good tools, stay on that path. And when the behavior improves and changes and your dog is impressing you and you're proud and you feel like you're getting a rock star out of it, you keep going that way. You don't let up. If you change your diet, hello, that was a huge piece of my health overhaul. If you change your diet and you lose weight because you're eating better or you're moving more, probably a combination of the two, and then you're like, damn, I feel good. I'm gonna start eating like shit again. You're gonna go backwards into that same result of probably not feeling well, putting some weight back on and having less energy and vitality and all these other things that come with not taking care of your body, right? So when you find that right path, guys, if we've trained your dog for you, we've shown you the formula, or if you've put some tools in place because you've been watching content and you've learned, wow, my dog doesn't have enough structure, my dog lacks the leadership they require, I need to change my tools because it's such a quick, effective change, then stay on that path. Do not let up. Consistency is the name of the game. And small, effective actions that are taken consistently over time are crazy powerful. Don't underestimate them, okay? You don't need to bite off everything all at once as far as how you implement in DIY. And when your dog comes home from professional training, don't put the pressure on yourself to be perfect in all areas immediately. Just do the best you can and be consistent at at least the things you can do, okay? Um, this is really important to me because I, I watch a lot of people struggle with this and feel very frustrated or confused when they you know, feel that they have a setback. They overanalyze it. Why is this happening? Why is my dog doing this? I thought you know, we fixed it. Um, you know, we were doing so well. I mean, it's just a chronic dynamic that I run into where you're not, you're missing the point. The point is you've got a lot of reprogramming, repatterning to do. It takes time and consistency. And when you're doing what works and you're getting the right result, um, you're still dealing with a living, breathing being. And there can be a lot of other factors outside your control that contribute to those setbacks as well, to why your dog's behavior may resurface. Generally, in the most basic sense, it's stress. It's stress. Usually, uh, we add stress, we see cracks in the foundation, right? So if you think of it that way, um, if your dog has a setback, you see behavior surface that upsets you, that feels like, you know, gosh, where did all of our gains go? Well, number one, remember this, and remember that I'm telling you right now, those gains are still there, dudes. You didn't lose them. But number two, you know, those experiences are normal, natural, reprogramming, repatterning. It doesn't happen overnight. Think of all the dumb, stupid stuff we do in relationships when we should know better, uh, when we've made mistakes in the past and we still manage to do them again. Um, it's because we're broken and flawed and it's just a function of, it takes time and practice and you have to make those mistakes in order to feel that pain and catalyst. Remember I was talking about, you know, in the context of real health issues. If somebody's out there listening and really struggling, you know, on the health side of things, I'm telling you right now, quit being so stubborn and requiring that the pain get worse or the sickness get worse in order to listen and follow directions and do what your body needs you to do and deal with your deep down stuff because that's what's going on, right? Uh, crazy consistency is key. Dogs are creatures of habit, building with techniques and tools and the lifestyle will gain the momentum. Yeah, it's exactly what's happening right now with Zozo, who's hanging out there. You gotta love how it's like Arnica products all over the counter and the um, Theragun that Mary just bought because we're all busted up over here from lifting weights and doing things. Okay, anyway. Um, I think that covers it. Yeah. Let me know if this is helpful and resonating and better yet, let me know if you can think of something right now specifically that you've been second guessing your gains about because it's difficult. 
second guessing whether or not what you were doing is working because all of a sudden you had a moment or an incident or a situation. I mean, I really do think that talking about relationships is a good area to apply this. It's like just because things went south with somebody and you made mistakes in communication or in commitment or you, know, you chose the wrong person and you dove in too fast too soon, just because these things happen doesn't mean you haven't learned, doesn't mean you haven't gained and improved and that you aren't moving that vibration up as you go through life and have these experiences. You're not suddenly incapable. You little stinker, she makes me wonder if she's moving over there, but she's not. Doesn't mean you're incapable of figuring out how to have you know, a healthy, great, reciprocal dialogue, communication, connection, whatever with somebody. You just have to learn you made mistakes. You had some setbacks, okay? So if you can really be self in ownership here and self-reflective about a specific thing with your dog in particular, where you're like, I have gotten soft about X, Y, Z, no ma'am, place. I have been, you know, lax about our exercise. My dog's not been out and had quality exercise lately. Or my dog, um, you know, I've been letting them hang out out of the crate. And I noticed that their behavior is not as good when people come over. Um, there's more barking, territorial stuff, or there's, you know, a situation of the walk is not as tight and, and, you know, connected as I want it to be. My dog's gotten a little bit pushy, sloppy, reactive, whatever. Just really hone in on that and own it. Just speak the truth of it so that you can own it and you can bring your awareness to it and you can recommit yourself to doing the things you need to do. If stress has been a factor for you, life changes there's been a lot of up and down for people in this last always but particularly in this last year plus year and a half you know if some of the arc of you know uh change and challenge that you've noticed with your dog during this time has ebbed and flowed with your stress your distraction your uncertainty then recommit yourself to what you need to do every day first and foremost to get your head in the right place your dog is just a mirror for that. Your dog is just giving you feedback about the energy and the environment they live in, the toxicity maybe of the emotional uh, attachments that you have or of the passivity that you demonstrate in their sphere, um, of the reactivity that you, that you contain within yourself around things because you're hurt or frustrated or feeling like you don't have what you want or need and your dog therefore is again a demonstration of that outwardly. Just look, just look, just, own it, speak to it, put it in the light, guys. That's the best way that I can tell you to move forward because now you'll be aware. You'll have awareness, you'll pay more attention to the things you need to, you'll do what you need to do uh, to you know, make those adjustments happen and you will see the gains that you want to see. Where's the garlic press? Not only are we cooking dinner, but we're making dog food too. Um, you'll see the gains that you wanna see if you actually follow through and do that work. Um, and I do really advocate here for journaling in this regard, especially if you've got a really tough dog and you know you just really feel like you've been on this roller coaster ride for a long time and not gotten the change that you're looking for, okay? So, um, any questions for me this week, guys, that you want me to answer, fire away. I will be happy to speak to those. Otherwise, that's what I had for you today. Clients who remove and stop utilizing what I've taught them, then unwanted situations arise. Always say the training is a roller coaster. Go back to the basics. Yeah. I mean, and not everybody has to do this too. Like it's kind of annoying actually. Um, some people, you know, have a shift within themselves when they have the right information. They just step up and they, um, you know, are more believable to their dog. They have a dog that is more receptive to that leadership and adjustment doesn't push back as much, doesn't vie for position as much. Temperament, disposition, genetics play a huge role in the results you're getting with the same tools, the same approach in every situation. It's gonna be different because of the dog and the person and the environment and the history. So not everybody has to work that hard. And sometimes that's really annoying because some of you have to work really, really hard. It's like, it's so different planet for you to try to figure out who your dog is and what they need and why they do what they do and to interpret them correctly and to stop projecting your stuff on them and being overly emotional or you know putting humanizing them right there's a lot of that that takes place a lot of humanizing i have people use a lot of language like 
you know, the dog's jealous, the dog's curious, the dog's um, afraid of, the dog's worried about. There are things that we just simply can't know, okay? There are a lot of things we just simply can't know about what our dogs are feeling. Um, the lay person in particular, at least, okay? Not that I don't have respect and belief in those that are attuned at a higher level, and not that I'm saying dogs don't feel, because I do not believe that at all. I'm saying we don't speak the same language, so we really don't know, okay? So when you, when you are a person who is so different, you're like, you operate like this, your dog operates like this, you're just not speaking the same language, okay? When you have that type of dynamic, it's really tough for a trainer to bridge that gap. It's really tough for the owner. So there's this whole process that needs to go on under the hood, which is another part of this timeline. Why I advocate the way I do for the timeline that I do is that you've got to respect and understand not only are you following directions theoretically, using the right tools, doing the right things, going through the motions, right? And, and that is required to be consistent for at least half as long as you were going the wrong way. But you're also needing to work on shifting the energetic and the emotional side of things. And boy, howdy, is that fucking tough, okay? That's the piece where I think it's easier when I give you examples like relationships, okay? If you've been in a relationship for an extended period of time, you know that there's no amount of, I want to understand you and I think that you're wrong, but I'm trying to adjust myself. And I mean, all these things that we go through that just fixes that time is so important for being able to understand, know, be known, practice, and, you know, perfect and create a permanence of that understanding of that dance that you need to do with somebody, right? So just keep that in mind because this is very true with dogs. Time is a massive component of your long-term success. And boy, are we impatient as a species. We are so impatient as a species, but that's the stuff that gets pulled from under the hood on the human end of the leash when you commit to stay in the course with your dog is you can take personal responsibility and ownership and go, man, I'm impatient, man, I'm reactive, man, I've got a short fuse for things when they don't go my way or they're not working easily or perfectly or I'm not perfect at something or if I feel judged, like I don't have you know, support or all these different things that can come up when you are navigating trying to resolve that you have a dog that sees you so clearly they they see you they know exactly what's going on in your heart and your mind and you can't hide anything from them and their behavior is just reflective of the fact they don't believe you when you say i'm the boss and you should listen to me or that they know your your pain right your anxiety your uncertainty uh, dogs will give you behavior that's representative of energy above all else. It's pretty extraordinary. We really, really don't need tools and language, but we use them because the majority of people are more successful if they have them and they know how to use them, right? But, you know, you'll have a lot of people in our community, certainly here, because um, it just seems to be the kind of crew that I attract who've used a lot of tools, every tool perhaps, and have still found that there are gaps, there are struggles, there are things that are not resolved, there are areas that are not improved, it's not working to keep the dog or to help the client with the dog or what have you, because there's this whole other energy world going on behind the scenes that's even more important than any of that stuff, okay? And it does come to light when you know the timeline component that I was talking with you about at the top of the broadcast. It comes to light when you have to recommit yourself to consistency, something that's really difficult in accomplishing any goals, right? So um, any hoodle, cooking, dog training, sharing my uh, chatty chattiness with you today, and I'm gonna wrap it here since I don't have other questions or comments this week to answer to. Um, but by all means, you can always send me Fix It Friday queries via email. You can email them to Cameron at hope2canine.com. You can submit uh, just our general contact form on our website if you forget my email and you want to send something over that way. Um, and then when we prompt you during the week on social media, you can comment and put your questions in there as well. And I'm happy to tackle them for you. Um, if you're new to the broadcast and you're like, who the hell is this lady who's doing this weird like cooking dog training thing? 
I'm Cam, I own the place, um, and I have an amazing team. Our trainers are extraordinary. They do an incredible job. Uh, primarily board and train is what we provide based on what we know works most effectively with the tools and the, the systems that we deploy and with the type of dogs that we tend to work with the most. Um, but we, we deal with all ages, pretty much all behaviors, um, and our programs are booked out for months. So if you need help immediately, get the free help that we offer you through Fix It or the community class. We have a free class every month here in North County in Escondido. It happens this Sunday, as a matter of fact, at 12 o'clock. So um, if you need some support and you can't afford to sign up with a trainer um, or you just like some perspective because you've tried a bunch of things and you're still having issues, get to class. Come and see us. Carrie and Anna, be there on Sunday. We're really excited to work with you and help you in any way that we can during that time. You can sign up for that on our website as well, hope2k9.com. And that is what this is about. It's my offer to you that I'm hanging out with you instead of just hanging out with Zozo. And she did amazing, did she not? <laughs> All right, gang, feel free to hit me up if you have other questions for future shows and I will be happy to chat with you. Otherwise, I'm gonna get on with my day. All right, take good care of you. Recommit yourself to that timeline. Remember, nothing's gonna happen overnight. You gotta be consistent, you gotta stay the course. You gotta remember at least half as long as you were going the wrong way. For me, that was a good 25, 30 years going the wrong direction. So I got a good 12 to 15 that I'm, I'm, I'm aging in reverse, see? I'm aging in reverse now that I figured that out. But I gotta, I gotta remember that. I can't mess around and then think my, my body is gonna be hunky-dory with that and get away with some stuff now. And it's the same thing as with the dog training with my clients. It's like you can get away with some stuff and then it gives you a false sense of confidence that you're good, right? And then I've been laid out and flattened a couple times in these last eight years I've been doing this overhaul for health uh, where I got a little reminder I was like hey Cam you can't mess around like that you got to stay on the course you got to be good okay so I just want to share that with you guys I speak from experience it's not easy but it's worth it all right talk to you later have a great day thanks for hanging out Claudia thanks for hanging out Claudia love you much Mwah. bye everybody <laughs>